lords. The three lords symbolize not only the root cause of the human condition, but the condition itself. Unfortunately, the thoughts and actions, as well as our other senses, generally trigger some sort of judgment. Everything is either good or bad. Consequently, that is what we experience. It is a vicious circle, for once the judgment is made, the word is spoken, and a new form is created, which is then judged. The circle is challenging to break. It is the nature of things. But as we shall see, it can be transformed. Potentially, the three lords are the lords of transcendence. But human consciousness remains largely materialistic. Materialism, devoid of spirituality, leads to strife. In the first painting, mind concocts his lies and speech transmits the lies to form. The result is the scene we see on the left. Sometimes we are swept away on a tide of events, often disturbing, sometimes catastrophic, that we feel powerless to control. Such experiences are known in the myths of spiritual traditions to be trials by water. These trials are so purposeful, for they are goads to the quest, but they also demonstrate what happens when life is dominated by our materialism. On the right of the painting, the man and the woman reach out to a horse. Whereas the man symbolizes intellect and the woman intuition, the horse symbolizes instinct, specifically the instinct for the quest. It is that which will carry us on our forthcoming journey. The second painting is the coming of the first muse, meditation. People embark on the quest for all sorts of ostensible reasons, but deep down it is usually because they feel a lack of a spiritual dimension in their lives. The very awareness of something missing acts as an invocation to the muse of meditation. At first it may be a dim awareness. In this painting, the face of the first muse hovers on the periphery of the group of lords. On the left of the painting, the man and the woman astride the horse, led by the dove, plunge off a cliff, which is what embarking on the quest tends to feel like. No one ever really knows what they're plunging into. This painting reflects the willingness to delve into the depths of the unexplored. In addition, the first thing that those who genuinely embark on the quest discover is that the promise is good. Their material needs are mysteriously taken care of. On the right, an angel supplies the man and the woman with food and drink while they sleep. In the painting, the face of meditation has become central. Memory appears as yet ghost-like in the background. It is an exciting time for the man and the woman who gallop confidently into the forest of ideas. The distant mountains symbolize their aspirations. On the right, they have climbed to the summit of one mountain only to find a higher one ahead of them. There is no way of knowing how to get there because mist obscures the way. Nevertheless, it is a moment of euphoria for the travelers who are unaware of the storm building overhead. The coming of the third muse, music. In this painting, to the left, the man and the woman are being thrown from the horse. To the right, they are lost and confused, and there is no dove to show them the way. The storm is breaking over them. Why are these things happening? Plunged in darkness, the man and the woman long for light, and this longing invokes the third muse, music. The dove flies to her, symbolizing the third aspect of ourselves and of life. It is attracted by the music of the muse, thus uniting the light of human love with the light of the divine love. A channel is thereby created between that which is above, divine consciousness, and what is below, human consciousness. And the channel enables the light of God to shine on earth, which is the whole point and purpose of the quest. As yet, however, the channel here is not yet born, it is simply conceived. In the fifth painting, truth comes to the first Lord, mind. Once the channel of awareness has been opened in consciousness, we receive our inheritance as children of God. You'll notice in the paintings that the lords are becoming more translucent. As the lords become more translucent, the muses become more permanent. 
On the left, the dove comes to the woman while the man sleeps. Very often, the male intellect side of the psyche has to be asleep in order for the female receptive side to receive the truth, which is no doubt why intuitions of the truth often come when least expected. In the middle, the dove flies down to the figure of the mind, implying that the truth in question, initially accepted on the right side of the brain, is now accepted by the left of the brain as well. Now that their channel is open, the man and the woman have a direct link to the voice of God, symbolized here by the old hermit on the right of the painting. Truth comes to the second Lord, speech. The channel of awareness is expanding and the dove has come to the second Lord. The man and woman are already subjectively seeing the world in a different light. They look into the pool, into their own unconsciousness, and see the light of God. When the light is found within, the world is seen in a different light too. The vision of the fireball, which symbolizes the whole, is their glimpse of oneness, of the whole that is God. The muses have now completely lost their transparency, which means to say that the spiritual vision of the man and the woman has become focused, whereas in the beginning it was but partial and hazy. The lords, meanwhile, have become much more transparent, which means to say that the man and the woman are being able to see through human reality to the divine reality beyond. In the final painting, truth comes to form. In this painting, we see the trial by fire, as well as the baptism by fire. In this painting, the man and the woman are passing through their trials with flying colors. Nothing can stop them now. On the right, their bodies merge with the horse and dove in the wholeness of the fireball. Their moment of ascension has arrived. What they are symbolically leaving behind is the world of human reality, and what they are about to ascend into is the world of divine reality. Since the real world is really the here and now, they are not so much leaving our world as seeing it with new eyes. This would indeed be like ascending from one world into another.